Hey guys, Alton here. First off, I want to say thanks for checking out my YouTube channel. Now, in today's video, we're going to go ahead and take a look at one of my selected lectures from my eight hour introduction to Windows Server 2016 for beginners course. So let's go ahead and let's get into it. In this video, I'm going to show you how to enable something called remote desktop connection on our Windows Server to allow us to remotely connect into it from other systems on our network. So why would we want to do this? Well, if we're an administrator and let's say that we're sitting at our computer or maybe we're sitting at somebody else's computer we're working on and we need to make a change on the server, but we don't want to walk over to the server room and be physically in front of the server. Well, we can enable this feature on the server to allow us to connect in remotely from another system. And if you're the system administrator for a small organization, this is definitely beneficial to have in place. So I'm gonna show you how to do this because it's very easy to do. So on our server, what we're going to do in Server Manager, we're gonna click on Local Server. We're going to see right here where it says Remote Desktop Connection. By default, it's disabled. So we're gonna click on here. And then we're gonna say Allow Remote Connections to this computer. And we're gonna leave this check marked. We'll hit apply and now we are allowing remote connections to this server for anybody that is a part of our administrator group. Now let's say that we had other IT personnel, but they're not a full-fledged administrator and we created a separate security group for them. If we wanted to add them, we would have to click here on select users and then we could add them in here. Click add, type in the usernames or type in the group and add them in. Now we don't need to in this demonstration, but I just wanted to show you that by default, Anybody that's an administrator has access, but if we create these as a security groups, we need to go in here and do it. So let's hit OK. And if we go back to the dashboard, then click back on local server, you're going to notice that this now changes to enabled. And we can verify this in our firewall as well. So we can do a search. We can go down to firewall and click on firewall within our control panel. And what you're gonna notice is that, remember we turned off a firewall initially, but when we added this to our domain and promoted it to a domain controller, it turned on the firewall for our domain. So if we click here, allow an app or feature through the Windows firewall, you're gonna notice that if we scroll down, and let me find it, here it is, remote desktop, it's now allowing remote desktop into the server on our domain, in a private network, and also in a public network. Now, if we wanna look at the specific port, we can go back to firewall, and we can click on advanced settings, and this is gonna show us the detailed rules. So we wanna look at inbound rules because we're allowing connections in. So we're gonna scroll all the way down, and we're gonna find the remote desktop, and here it is, remote desktop, there's three different rules. We'll click on user mode because this is where a user is connecting in. Well, you can see the details here, but if we click on this, it actually tells us an inbound rule for remote desktop service to allow RDP traffic on TC port 3389 is enabled and we're allowing this connection. So RDP stands for remote desktop protocol and port 3389 is the default port. And you're gonna notice that it's enabled both for TCP as well as UDP. So that's just a simple way to verify that the server created those rules and it's going to allow it. So we've done everything that we need to do on the server, very simple and basic. Now what we can do is we can go over to our Windows 10 computer and what I'm going to do, and let me pause the video, I'm gonna bring them side by side because I wanna show you what happens when we connect. So I'll be back in one second. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and log into our Windows 10 machine. And I'm gonna make sure that I'm logging in with my administrator account. Now, the reason for this is because I haven't given standard users access to this. So if I logged in with one of the regular accounts I created, well, they're not gonna have access to connect remotely into the server. In fact, they can't even connect locally into the server because they're not an administrator. So what we need to do is we're gonna do a search for remote desktop connection. And you'll notice as I type it in, it's going to auto find it up here. So we wanna click on this, this remote desktop connection desktop app, and you're gonna see this pop-up window. 
And now what we can enter here is we can either enter the IP address of this server, 192.168.10.5, or the computer name, which is dc1.alnet.com. So either is fine. So I'll just do dc1.alnet.com. I'm going to hit connect, and it's going to try to connect to the server. It's going to ask us for our credentials. So we'll go ahead and provide it our credentials. We'll hit OK. And then it's going to secure remote des desktop connection. And eventually it's going to give us a pop-up prompt. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video because this could take about 10 to 15 seconds depending upon our system. Um, and actually it went pretty quick. And what you notice what happened here is that it logged me in as the administrator. And when it logs me in, it locks the server. So that's why I wanted to show this. And if I minimize this to make it so it's not full screen, again, there you go. So now we're remotely connected to the server and we can do everything that we want to do on the server just like we were locally. Now you may get a pop-up when this is connecting in regards to your certificate not being valid. If you do get that, just go ahead and click continue, but that because that may be something that pops up, and sometimes it does when you're connecting to these servers, especially depending upon the actual type of account. And I'll actually I'll show you what it looks like. So I have a screenshot from a different server. So let me pause the video and show you what that looks like. All right, so I took an example screenshot, and so you may get this type of a pop-up when it's initially trying to connect. And what you wanna simply do is say, don't ask me again, check mark that, and say yes. So if you do get that, don't worry, it's pretty standard, and you may get it from time to time, depending uh, upon if you're connecting to this server or not with a different account. So when I did a test run with this to make sure everything ran properly, I added the Harden account and I ran it with a Harden account and it ended up giving me this, but this time around it didn't. So you may get this, you may not, just so you know that this is standard. It's just saying that we don't have a valid certificate because we don't have a certificate authority in place and we're not going to get into KPIs and certificate authorities and all that stuff. Just understand that just if you click this check mark and say yes, you'll be fine to proceed forward. So that's all there is to doing this at this point in time, we are remotely connected to the server. And if we wanted to do anything with the server, if we wanted to add a role, we could click dashboard, add roles and features and whatnot. If you wanted to go to tools and we wanted to go to group policy management, we could do that. It's as if we're actually sitting in front of that server. So very nice tool to have. And then if we want to cancel out the connection, we can just go ahead and we can say sign out or we can go ahead and close this out and it's going to end our connection. And then what we can do is we can go back into here, we can log back in. So that's the easy way, the very simple way of setting up remote desktop connections to our server so we can access it remotely on the network from another system. So if you have any questions in regards to what we did in this video, please let me know. If not, thanks for watching and I'll see you at the next video. Take care. Well, I hope that you enjoyed today's video and you learned a lot from it. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up and also consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. Now, if you're interested in taking this full course or just learning more about it, check out the video description down below because I've included a link where you can learn more about the course and enroll into it if you'd like. So again, thanks for watching my video. I appreciate it and I look forward to seeing you guys at the next video. Take care.